you were on mute. Isn't live theater fun? All right, so good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the eighth annual Providence Fringe Festival um, presented by the Wilbury Theater Group and collaboration with Waterfire Providence. Um, we're so glad that uh, you've joined us for another great year. And this is just one of the many amazing performances you're gonna see throughout Fridge. It's a, high, it's a hybrid festival this year, meaning we have online and in-person events. So if you happen to be around Providence, we hope you'll enjoy uh, join us at the Waterfire Arts Center we got seven different stages going on in addition to all the online stuff. But there is a lot going on. So to follow everything, you can follow us at, at FringePVD or check it out on the website, FringePVD.org. Uh, speaking of social media, we actually need your help this year. We're running the Fringe Awards, which is uh, our own version of that old and tired award show. So instead of best actor, best director, anything like that, we want you to create your own category inspired by what you see at Fringe. So think outside the box. You're going to want to choose like most interesting use of a pizza box or uh, best sequin cowboy boots or uh, my my one of my personal favorites uh, was the uh, most unique swag we got. We were getting some really interesting gifts from performers this year. So think outside the box. Then you're going to post your award with your nominated performer and then you're going to use the hashtag fringe PBD awards then on our closing party at 9 p.m. July 31st. You can join us here at the Waterfire Arts Center and our favorite master of ceremonies, Matthew Lawrence, will present the awards and you can see if yours was chosen. Um, so without further ado, um, I hope everyone is ready for another great show uh, and you're settled down in your comfiest chair with your snack and your drink. Um, and I don't need to tell you where the bathrooms with fire exits are because I hope you know what you're doing in that case. Uh, and without further ado, I present uh, Mask On, Mask Off, Short plays by the Blue Cow Group. Take it away, thanks for fringing. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Blue Cow Group's production, Masks On, Masks Off, part of the Providence Fringe Festival. The Blue Cow Group is a Providence-based playwriting group with members Elaine Brousseau, Kay Ellen Bullard, Susan Buttrick, Jane Hanna, Norma Jenks, Martha Douglas Hodgsmanson, and Monica Staff. This is the sixth year that the Blue Cow Group has participated in the Providence Fringe. Tonight, you will see something, this afternoon, I'm sorry, um, you'll be seeing something a little bit different. Well, this is on Zoom. Uh, the performance itself, you'll notice, is being live streamed. The reason is that we didn't know what we were getting into when we first started this project. We, we thought that we might have to do everything apart from one another. But instead, we have found that we could do a little bit of each and we are bridging the gap between Zoom and live theater. So sit back, relax, and enjoy what our performers, director, and playwrights have created for you. And now to the performers, masks on. Which one is it today? Hurry up, you're going to make us late for rehearsal. Wait, you're shitting me, right? You do know what play we're doing. Well, I'm in for this weekend. But of course I know. Today we're rehearsing Xenons, the Nick Andros, right? Okay, and how many masks do you need? Well, let's see, I need one for the Shepherd Stephanos, one for the Prince Melando or Owen, one for Aegeus, so I need the one with the blood dripping down the face. Well, they might be using that in another play, let me check. 
Nope, nope, it's available. You're good to go. Actually, I hate that mask. It's so gruesome and it's smelly. Do they ever wash these things? I'm gonna be sweating in this damn heat in that freaking mask. You know, Cosmos, I've been thinking. I hate all these masks. You don't suppose we could ditch them, do you? Don't even think about that. You need that mask. We've used it for years. Besides, how would the audience know who you are without it? By my voice, by my expressions. I can really make my voice project. Just forget it, Hilarion. Without the mask, you're just you, Hilarion. But with the mask, you're a, a god or a prince or a hero or a shepherd. Besides, I don't think we could tell the story without the masks. If I'm in the audience, I need to know when you're playing a god or a king or a shepherd. Uh, the masks help me tell the characters apart. Well, what if I didn't play all three characters? What if I only played Aegeus and you or someone else played the shepherd? Come on, that's not how it works. Uh, too many actors on the stage gets confusing and crowded. Remember, there's a chorus on stage commenting on all the action. I'm not convinced, but okay, okay. Just give me the three masks for rehearsal. You in this one too? The Nicandros? Uh, yes, actually. I'm playing the grieving sister Calvisto. Oh God, that part's so excruciating. <laughs> Xenon really pulled out all the stops on this one. It's so unfair that my character, Aegeus, gets killed in battle because of misinformation about where the enemy is. Of course, Callisto is beside herself and the audience will be too. And there won't be a dry eye in the amphitheater. No, it's just too sad. They won't want to come or they'll want to walk out. And that's where I think you're wrong. Uh, the audience wants to be sad. Uh, remember last summer when Sophocles laid Oedipus low at the end of the play? Uh, the audience was shocked and horrified, but they brought down the house with their applause. And Sophocles even won the grand prize, didn't he? Hmm. Why do you think that is? Why do people want to see a play and be miserable or sad? I'm not sure. I think it has something to do. Ali, what are you doing here? We're about to rehearse. You can't be back here. Yeah? I was just passing by on my way to the market, and I thought I'd take a peek at the two of you rehearsing. But Athenian law says I can see the play, so why not rehearse? Yeah, but wouldn't you want to see the finished product instead of some instead of some half-baked version? We're about to work on things in rehearsal that might not see the light of day. I don't mind what you say, Talia. Maybe you can help me run my lines. Oh. Sure. Yeah, hold, I like that. hold on, Valerian. A woman not allowed to do that. Oh, lighten up, Cosmos. Talia is here. I need help with my lines. What's wrong with that? You can't read, can't you? Uh, my sister sure. can't read. Sure, I'm the woman else. Okay. Um, you be Athena. I'll be Aegeus. Let's start at the top of the page. About three unravelings of the scroll down, where uh, Aegeus is lamenting being at war, separated from his family. Oh, ye gods, why am I thus so alone? Why did you bring me to this brackish place littered with the detritus of war? Hear me, Athena. Oh, um. Why, more? Oh, Tolls, uh, why, mortal, do you sail, rail, rail, rail against the gods? Come. Uh. Come to the shore, come to the shore, and I will answer you, answer, 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 sorry. Uh, answer, answer you. You know, Talia, I have a better job for you. Uh, why don't you help me on with that mask? I want to see if I can be heard better with or without it. <laughs> oh, ye gods, why am I thus so alone? Why did you bring me to this brackish place littered with the detritus of war? Hear me, Athena! Can you hear me, Athena? I can tell you. Oh, um, well, your voice is a little muffled. But, you know, I'm, I can tell Aegeus is miserable because I'm looking at you, uh, and I can see the mask, and I see the bloody tears. And, you know, I know I can see that way in the back of that amphitheater, from the cheap seats. I could have told you that. But do I really need to signal that with the mask? Wouldn't the audience be able to correct, connect with my character more directly if they were looking right at me, the actor, showing them the bleak situation? Well, Arion, stop throwing a monkey wrench into something that's worked for its centuries. Besides, 
wearing the mask gives you an opportunity to play more than one character. And I think that's important. Yeah, if you played more than one part, wouldn't the festival have to hire two other actors to play your two other roles? I mean, maybe it's a money thing. Stop maybe it. the festival doesn't want to pay for the actors. What do you know? I don't care about all the tradition. I still think the mask is off-putting and that it takes away from me really revealing this character and all his pain and all his fear. Oh, for the love of Dionysus, I think you're wrong here. Uh, didn't Oscar Wilde say, a mask tells us more than a face? What? How can that be true? For starters, the mask only shows my character in his moment of misery. My face can show you so many more emotions. How Aegeus felt on the battlefield, how he felt right before he got the bad news. It's not just one emotion. I am sick of looking like a Johnny one -man. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. What if you as one character wore many different masks? You could wear a mask to signify you're happy or you're lonely, you're sad. And I mean, wouldn't the audience be a little confused if you just did away with masks altogether? I hate to admit it, but I think Talia is right here. I certainly need the mask to show the audience when I'm playing a woman. Uh, the mask helps me get in the character. It helps me think how I want to say a certain line. It helps you get in the character? Aren't there other ways you could do that? Haven't you ever heard of Stanislavski's method of expressing a role? Try those exercises. They'll get you in the character. Who needs the mask? And haven't you ever heard what Tom Stoppard has Gildenstern say in Rosencrantz and Gildenstern are dead? Give us this day our daily masks. So take that. Last year, I bought a t-shirt with a mask out of this on it. And I think that the souvenir vendors were really upset if you just quit wearing masks. Is it just me then that feels my character is hiding behind the mask? How can I bring the audience to catharsis? That's what you were getting at earlier, Cosmos, right? If I can't show the audience the pity and fear of the situation. Stop it, Valerian. We're getting called to rehearsal now. Let's go. I'm not happy about it, but all right, I'll let it rest. See you on stage, I guess. What do you mean, for the board? His problem is he thinks too much. What about the catharsis? It's a little hard to explain. It's like having a good cry to show and then going on with your life afterwards. That sounds weird. Yeah. Oh, Cosmos, break a leg. Morning, G. Morning. What a great day. I guess. Mike's late. Again. That's all right. How hard can it be? All he has to do is put on a shirt and roll over. Gosh. Well, he is the boss. <laughs> well, maybe he should start acting like one. You know, you're lucky you're a contractor. You only have to work with him for six months. You never know. It could be longer. And I've learned so much from Mike during my contract. I mean, we always have such great meetings. Sure. Maybe this time we'll have current financials. The last month we had was March. I'm going to text him. Well, no worries. We can catch up while we're waiting. How's your week been? Okay. Just okay? Come on, smile. It can't be that bad. Do you mind if we get started? I have another meeting at 10. What about Mike? He'll figure it out. Oh, speak of the devil. Says something came up. He's not going to make it. Well, thanks for letting me. Oh, no. Oh, are, you right? are you all right? Oh, I twisted my neck again. Well, I, I can show you how to make a compress. Do you have any eucalyptus? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll go pluck some out of my eucalyptus grove out back. That is amazing. I have always wanted to grow eucalyptus. How many trees do you have? I don't have a eucalyptus grove. <laughs> you are so much fun to work with. You, you always make me laugh. <laughs> <sighs> All right, why don't, we, why don't we start with the social media campaign? Um, last week, the waterfall video had 20,000 unique impressions. And the, Kelly? Kelly, are you listening? I'm ready. Oh, you don't have to write anything down. I'll send you all the updated numbers tonight. Thank you. Actually, I was thinking about the eucalyptus trees. I don't have any trees. Oh, I know, but but you shared such a lovely vision of the grove that I wanted to write it down in my gratitude journal. I like to write something every day that makes me happy. You should try it. I'm not feeling very grateful right now. My neck is killing me. Yeah, but you'll feel better soon. No offense, but I don't feel like being cheered up right now. I just want to wallow in self-pity. Well, just trying to help. <laughs> I know. Look, don't you ever get mad or, or frustrated? Oh, everything used to bother me, but, but what good is all that stress? And then I went to a program that taught me to count my blessings. So now whenever I'm worried, I, I think of something positive to change my perspective. Oh. And I know, I know it sounds a little new age and all, but it's really helped me, especially since I got laid off a few years ago. I have a challenge for you. Sure, sure. You need to get that? It's Mike again. He wants to make sure I check the email, blah, blah, blah. Okay. How would you feel grateful about this? This happened to my friend, Leela. Let's say that corporate announces that they're thinking about changing your health insurance to one that no one's ever heard of. And none of your doctors are on the provider list and your co-pays are gonna go through the roof. Okay. Well, I would say that I'm lucky that I have an employer that provides insurance. <laughs> oh, come on. It's a basic benefit. Everybody has insurance. Oh, not me. Remember, I'm a contractor. Oh, oh, I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, I still have insurance. I'm on the state plan until I become permanent when my contract extends next month. What did you say? Oh, I guess I wasn't supposed to say anything yet. Well, Kelly. This isn't a hypothetical. Who told you we're going to be permanent? Mike. Please tell me that you're not counting on him. Why not? Check your email. It's from Dale Simmons. Check again. It's important. It, it came in at 8.52 this morning. Contractors aren't usually on the distribution list. That, that coward. Oh, no wonder he blew off our meeting. Mike's always been so supportive. You both have. Would you stop being so positive and listen? They have a hiring freeze. Oh. Well, well, well that's okay if my contract is extended until the freeze ends. They're not extending any contracts in our division. Oh. Well, then I have um, only six weeks. Mike should have told you. He's been stringing you along, having you work all those extra hours. I'm so sorry, Kelly. Should be used to it by now. Ever since I got laid off, I've, I've been living like a nomad. 
bouncing from contract to contract. And, and every time I get a new assignment, I try to work really hard. So maybe, just maybe it might become a permanent job. Is that why you're so positive? Well, yeah. nobody likes a complainer. I keep my frustrations to myself, even when that permanent position doesn't become permanent. Oh, oh, but, but I still have this. <laughs> oh, look, if you need a reference or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, should we continue our conversation about the social media event? Okay. Go home. It's my fight, I can see that now. I just thought you cared enough about your father to want to fight alongside me. How dare you be so mean? How dare you suggest that I didn't love Pop? Then do something. I can't bring him back, Ma. Nobody, nothing, and no stupid trick you're gonna do with a dead mouse is gonna do that. I'm with you, Nona. You would. By the way, it's uh, six mice now. What did you get six dead mice? Uh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't tell me. I don't, I don't want to know. It's six live mice. What? Oh, no, no, uh, you're getting into liability territory. Uh, Seriously, you could get sued for real money. Oh, they can't get blood from a stone. For, for your information, you're not a stone. You've got Pop's Navy pension. Do you want that to end up in their bank account? Sophia, I thought you were with me. I am with you, but this plan is nuttier than that cake you make me. <laughs> Torte de noche. It's good, right? That's kind of not the point. We're, well, we're, we're, we're not gonna, gonna let you do that. You think I want to do this? Then why are you? The memory of my Joe requires it. Well, my job is to keep you out of trouble, which is a story of my life. Well, don't you think you got that the wrong way around, sweetie? Well, if only. Listen, why don't we go home and have some hot cocoa? Right? Come on, come on this way. We used to have, uh, we used to put brandy in our cocoa. Oh, just on special occasions. Can we have those little tiny marshmallows? Doesn't that sound good? Sounds stupid. How do you think your father would feel if you knew what a welcher he raised? Well, we said we'd meet you here. Never said we'd help you. Don't give me that lawyer shit. Well, you paid for that lawyer shit. For which I will always be grateful. Aha! You have to help me. You owe me. Oh, not oh, no, sweet Jesus, again with the lawyer shit. Do you have a better idea? Yeah, how about anything? No, I'm serious. Put up or shut up. Organize a protest against a big chain putting a little guy like Nono out of business. Big guys hate a PR stink. There you go, big guys gobbling up the little guys. That's about American as apple pie. What am I, Lithuanian? They moved in two doors down. There ought to be a law against that. There is, and you know we tried to fight it. Money always wins. Those, God, those, those SOBs with their lattes move in and all of a sudden, everyone can't get in there fast enough to, to pay for overpriced coffee, overpriced bitter coffee. Why? Ma, 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 we know that you miss me, but this plan is not gonna work. You know, they actually bought the place next door on that side street, I forget its name. Two front doors? Hope those owners didn't die. Look, he didn't die from this. He, he didn't take care of himself. Stress is what killed him. No, no, he of... already had a bad heart. So let's not be so dramatic. They killed him. You're both right. No, no died of a broken heart, period. I see empathy skipped a generation. Who is you two ganging up on me? The story of my life. Oh, this too? It's time to let it go. Or your heart breaks. My heart's already broken. Joe wouldn't take this lying down. He didn't. He fought hard. 
He's lying down now. Sophia, you're really not coming with me. Look, no, I will not let her jeopardize her law career by planting some mice in the bathroom of a coffee shop. Uh-oh. A couple were dead. Uh, could Sophia come in with four live mice? I agreed to one dead mouse. I don't think the store will do anything about that. No, 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 no. I told you this. No way. No, not even with one. Oh, all right, all right, all right. I'll do it, I'll help you out. And Sophia can be our getaway driver. Thank you, but this could be trouble for you too. <laughs> yeah, well, I have a good union. All right, well, just let's stop talking and tell me what we have to do. Okay, we, uh, we put on our masks, and we go in the store and I go into the bathroom and I let the mice out and I yell, there's a pack of mice in here. And you yell, Ew, no way I'm buying anything here. And Sophia keeps, do we leave the store and Sophia's got the getaway car running? Well, no, I'm gonna have to swear that I didn't know you were gonna do the mask thing. <laughs> Jeez, don't tell us that. And, and, and why are we wearing ski masks? I mean, wouldn't that look like we're in cahoots? I mean, Good point, but you don't have another mask, do you? Well, I'm not having an old COVID mask in here or something like that. I. Ah, I got one. <laughs> well, why are we wearing any masks? Well, I, they've got video cams, and I don't think I could do this unless I feel hidden. And besides, besides what? Well, it makes me feel sort of a uh, badass, you know? And I need to feel like that to do this for your father. I miss him so much. You know what? You're, you're not doing this for him. Of course I am. Ma's right. It's for you. Oh, they, they, they still don't get it, Joe. Well, let's make this clear. Um, you know this is going to come back and it's going to bite you right oh, in the ass. Oh, justifiable vengeance is worth a bite in the ass. Let's take a selfie. Oh, okay. <laughs> you started it, Mom. She did. No. I mean, well, you know, tonight when you do talk to Pop, you're going to have one hell of a story to tell him. <laughs> He'll be proud of you. <laughs> He's going to know that you'll be all right. Oh, my God. This is for me, isn't it? Is that okay? All right. Well, it's time for this gang to plant two dead vermin. I appreciate the increase. Well, thanks. But, you know, I'm only doing this because I love you very, very much. Well, yeah. and, it, and it does feel good to be a, a, a team, right? Let's get ready to rock and roll or rock and load or roll and- I've been thinking, pretty sure if I can, I can get this down to a no trespassing order. I could go in too. This is a job for this mother and daughter. And then afterwards we can go home and watch Aaron Brockovich. <laughs> With Coco and those little marshmallows. Oh, yeah. And Brandy, let's not forget about the Brandy. Hmm. Oh, what a day, am I right? Oh, what a day. Oh. Saving people sure gets to the knees, am I right? Oh. I'm just glad it's not raining. Can't stand flying in the rain. I know it's not real flying, but sometimes those wires hurt. I apologize. I am so sorry. Uh, you're one of these staying character actors, huh? Uh, uh, keep the magic going in between scenes. I get it. I understand. You're a superhero, not an actor. I get it. I really do. I didn't mean to intrude. I know how that. That's how a lot of you Hollywood biggies do it. Uh, that's how you get the Oscars, right? Got to do what you got to do. Uh, stay in shape, so to speak. Uh, keep up with the competition. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that you're not good enough to have one of them awards. Of course not. I'm not even sure if you do, do you? Anyway, you don't have to talk. Listen, I'm a plumber. And when I'm focused and in the zone, I can fix a complicated leak in under six minutes. Of course, if there's some idiot talking in my ear, well, then forget about it, right? 
And you want to smack him in the head because he's wasting your time and you just want to get it done. I get it. I get it. So how long do you think we got to wait for the big scene? I really have no idea. Nah, why would you? I know a guy like you wouldn't know. It's okay. You don't have to talk, Gary. Is it right if I call you Gary? I heard the director say Gary. Uh, unless you prefer Gareth. Uh, that's a really cool name. Garrett Swan. Uh, very Hollywood. I worked with a guy once, accidentally called him Sly. He got all upset. I won't say who it was, but geez, leave your ego at the door, will you? <laughs> Would you mind doing me a favor? Oh, geez, you're not going to ask me to be quiet and leave, are you? Because uh, the director told me to stand right here. Uh, they're doing the big explosion scene next, and I don't want to get it wrong. No, not at all. Uh, would you mind getting me some water and a straw? I'm desperately dehydrated. Oh, yeah, sure. The actor also told me not to move. That's why I've been so quiet. They've been taking still photos for the last hour, and they sprayed something on my legs, and I have to wait for it to dry. Oh, I, I see. When did acting have to rely so much on special effects? Doesn't it take away from the skill? Surely I would receive better acclaim for appearing like the superhero rather than a model replica. When one plays Richard III, the focus is on my portrayal, not on the structure of my hump. You agree? Uh, uh, totally. <laughs> acting. Ha! Yeah, acting. Hey, hey listen. Uh, if you want anything else, let me know. Uh, they got donuts. Ah, you probably don't eat donuts. <laughs> Amazing, no, huh? Uh, look at us. Uh, no one could tell us apart. Uh, you could walk down to the local bar and no one would look twice. I think they would. Ah, dressed like this, we could go out, pick up a couple of girls, swap them, they wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> you don't think they would know? Ah, that's the ploy of a stunt double, right? <laughs> if you are my stunt double, aren't you meant to look like me? Well, I do from a distance. Uh, uh, those shots of you running, I mean you running, but it's me. Uh, from a distance, we look the same height. It's a perspective thing. Uh, like cows in a field. Uh, uh, they're not so small when you're up close. Really? Mm. Uh, my mother got bit by a cow once. That's a really big mouth. <laughs> PTSD from cows for years. Uh, she still can't drink milk. I bet. <clears throat> so, you're not an actor. No, nah, I'm a plumber by trade. I'm afraid of acting. I forgot my lines once in a kid's production of Grease. Ended up doing lighting. We go together. Nah, I got nothing. <laughs> Horrible experience. Good show, though. You ever do that one? Definitely not. I love a good musical. Uh, how about that Wicked? It's one of my favorites. Ah, I get chills just thinking about that song. Defying gravity! <laughs> so... Why are you my stunt double? I'm not aware of any leaks our superhero will need to be fixing. Uh, long story, uh, but I'll make it short. Uh, before I was a plumber, I was a stunt double. Crazy business. Fast cars, fiery explosions, very exciting. I was Tom Cruise in one of the Mission Impossibles when I discovered that an Italian car threw a wall and into a lake. Not so possible. I, I hurt myself and scared my old heart, so I quit. A lot less frightening laying on a bathroom floor with a plunger and a wrench. I don't miss it. I don't know how you guys do it. What? Wear a costume and stand around in stupid poses all day. Yeah, but you're a superhero. But I'm not a superhero. I just act like one. And even then, you can't see who I really am. Everybody can be a superhero. I was just telling my daughter that. Uh, maybe the masks just uh, make you bolder to do more. Yeah, see, you wouldn't understand. You're a good-looking guy. But for us ugly ones, the mask gives you freedom to, from people's judgment. I'd wear a mask every day if I could. That'd be better if I could be invisible. You think people, other, other people judge you? Come on, of course they do. Instant decisions about my height, my weight, my voice, and, and, my, and me being a plumber. If you and I did go out to a bar, which one of us would pick up the girl? Well, yes, but... You seem to have everything you want. Your own business, a daughter. You don't pretend for a job. It's not easy being me, though. I have to look a certain way, vote a certain way, 
follow the correct things on social media. Yeah, your business is brutal. Still, I could use an ego boost every now and then. I mean, wearing the costume, I feel insignificant. But when I wear the costume, I feel better. You don't think it hides you? I could be more myself. We wouldn't even be talking if I was just a plumber, right? So if you quit stunt work, why are you here? Oh, money. Your first stunt double got hurt, so they called me. He did? Yeah. And it's funny, they couldn't find anyone else. Uh, there's a stigma going around. This might be an unlucky set. A stigma? Mm. How interesting. I haven't been feeling well. Maybe you're right. Well, there you go. Better be careful. This stunt, is it very dangerous? I had to sign a lot of forms. So you do all the life-threatening work while I stand around all day. And you think you're the one who needs an uh, ego boost. Nah, it's a risk. Yeah, but it depends on what you focus on. It's a windy day. Some people uh, complain that it's cold and your hair got messy. I focus on Mother Nature doing her miracle work and how something invisible can be so strong. <laughs> Anyway, it looks like they're calling me over. I'll talk to you soon. It's time to earn my daughter's first year of college. Doing this, is it all worth it? Anything for my daughter. Even a big explosion. That's amazing. Mm. Hey, listen, after we're done, me and you off to the bar. No one will know. <laughs> hey, wait a second. I've got an idea. You must have some bad times to report. Nothing unusual. No, but that's the point. You've been his aide for 10 years. You've gotten used to his abuse. Is that new? No, no, no. People are saying their stories now. They're telling their stories. Not me. Let them gossip. I have some professional pride. He's a menace. Step up and tell your story. I'm still standing. He's not perfect, but he's hardly a menace. Well, other women are talking. Is that news? He creates a, a toxic work site. I'm still standing here. Well, I saw you too at the Christmas party. And he kissed you. On the cheek for a selfie. Yes. Could you say no? I wanted the photo. He is the go. Yes, and that creates a power difference. That's not his only misstep. Oh, you heard about his crimes on Valentine's Day. Which crimes? He gave a single red rose to each and every one of his female staff. All That's of rather them. Suggestive. Rather gallant. I'll not lend my voice to these political attacks. You've come to the wrong office. No, it's personal. It's not political. Wow. That's new. Remember the 60s before our time? The political is the personal. The personal is the political. Let's face it, he got too much national and even international attention and a claim for the way he handled the pandemic. Same as 49 other state governments. Yes, they all had to step up in the vacuum of national leadership, but Arga was exemplary. His voice was strong and empathetic and everything he had not heard from the White House and so badly needed. He was a daily must watch. He gave us all strength. His confidence helped me. Sexual harassment. No, no, it's not. Trump boasts on camera about how he grabs a woman's crotch when he meets them. Now that right there- That was wrong and so is this man's actions. He's not perfect, but he's not evil. What about Clinton and Monica or Kennedy and Marilyn? Well, so now we know more about what they're doing and we know what to do. Thanks to the Me Too movement. Exactly. We know more, and I know more about these politics and these such accusations. Political 
forces in the state Dems must want to take the gov down. I mean, who are these powerful forces? <laughs> They'll name themselves soon. They'll have to step forward to give force to their claims. Mark my word, someone high in the state organization got jealous and decided to take the gov down. Someone high up in the party is going to take him down and he's gonna speak up soon. Well, you will let me know when this happens. <laughs> we'll all know soon. He'll be on the evening news. The gov will be part of canceled culture. He's not being canceled. No. No. He's being reframed. What do you mean? What does that mean, reframed? Haven't you heard how they're deleting the scenes from classic movies? Who's doing that? Turner Classic is deleting the scenes of Mickey Rooney playing a raging Asian person in Breakfast at Tiffany's. And even in Gone with the Wind, the hysterical African-American domestic slaves are being adjusted, toned down, re-edited, contextualized, refrained. Yeah, well, and better for it. I mean, no one will miss those scenes or characters. Wrong again, Alice. Those movies are documents of their time and place. If everything in them is adjusted There'll be no record of our own prejudices. We are not prejudiced now. Oh, no? You never really liked the gov. Is that because of your prejudice that you have and that is unexamined? What are you talking about? I just, I just never liked him. He's, he's too, too folksy. Listen, I hope you are not trying to reduce my objections to ethnic bias. You went there first. There was an Irish Catholic running for office 60 years ago. That's all that was talked about when JFK was running for president. Now there's another Irish Catholic president and it's not even mentioned, but an Italian American president, is that a step too far? Let's nip it in the buddy, hey, let's ruin his chances at state level. Oh, you really are reaching for it. How can you even care, compare the gov to the JFK? They must be compared and embraced. Prejudices don't just fall down. You knock them down. Like your prejudice against the gov. I am not prejudiced against him. Uh, look, you know, I, I know, I know how friendly he seems. He talks about his family and his uh, his brother and his daughters, but but then he gets he gets too familiar. You've been gunning for him since he let you go ten years ago and hired you. But you know what? I, I I'm glad I'm glad that he fired me because I'd rather work for a woman right now anyway. I'm much happier. Maybe you can return the favor and let him alone. No. No, no, not, not even people who are working for him now are now finally speaking up. It is the time, tone of the times. I mean, we, can, we, we can say what really, really happens to us. And what are they saying? Your secretary, Connie, is saying lots of things. How he ogled her. Ogled? Just an ugly way to say he looked at her? No, no, no. Ogled means that he... Oh. Oh, oh. oh I get it now. I finally, I get it. You have a huge crush on your boss. He is easy to love. Oh, yeah, well, no fond return of love? Huh? What has he done for you? Are you, are you fully vaccinated? Hmm? You, you, you know that, that Connie told me he, he's given all sorts of special perks for his family. Perks? What perks? She has, she has evidence that he's got early vaccine shots for his brother and for his daughters. Not for himself? <laughs> no, of course not. At least he has some shame. And you are shameless. Have you no decency? Get out of this office. 
I don't need to see you again and all of your fake news and your fake mask of care and concern. You are a bare-faced liar. And what are you? A sad, lonely old maid who's got, who worships a boss who doesn't even know she's alive. Yes, yes, I have I have the files that you asked for. Uh, oh, oh, no, 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 it's um, just a cold or my allergies, no problem. Yes, I, yes, I can bring them right in for you. No problem, I'll be right there. And so Cassandra, how's everything else going besides being out of work? Rough. Remember, it's only temporary. My options are limited. Oh, come on now. How many times have we chatted just like this? Why don't you see it? The diagnosis. Okay. What would you like to discuss? Why can't you sign off on the form and opine that I am disabled? Because you're not Cassandra. You don't meet the diagnostic criteria. You don't see me. Actually, I do. One job for me. One job for me on hold indefinitely. That's just it, Cassandra. When we look at the skill set for successful sex workers and we compare them to the diagnostic criteria for the autism spectrum, they don't mesh. I am. Me. You're successful at what you do. You're organized. You keep a list of clients. You schedule appointments. You're technologically savvy. You have great interpersonal skills. You're creative, not to mention the actual job requirements. You're uninhibited. No. no. Look, I don't make a commission on every disability claim that I suggest be denied. We're almost out of time. Until then, why don't you start applying for administrative jobs yeah. just until you can see start seeing patients again? I can't, and and I, I can't, I can't, and I can't survive on what I make from the one client that I have left that I connect with virtually. We're going to have to stop here. But until then, think about those stellar interpersonal skills we talked about. Uh -huh. How's the same time next week? Hey, how are you? Can't complain. Let's just hope this weather holds out. Yes, well, uh. Yes, Roy? I hope you don't think I'm some kind of a nut, you know, desperate or something. Now, what would make you say that? I just keep thinking most people would, you know, I don't know, wait until this whole social distancing thing blows over. I don't want to do that. I think I'd miss it. Oh. And so would I. Thanks. So, what shall we do today? Um, Something different this time? The bells. Ugh, always. I, I think about you, about this, when I'm not with you. Me too. How did you know? I'm wanting more. Okay. Um, we can do that. More bells? No, I mean from you. 
the shower again. That's fine. Um, you just have to excuse me for one second and I just have to set up, okay? I sit here during the week in the silence and I think about things, about people, just wondering who we are. Do you know what I mean? Yes, you said it. You don't have to agree with me. I know this is just an appointment. No, not at all. I was thinking of you as I was cutting avocados the other morning. I was imagining us going out for brunch together <laughs> and, and feeding each other. Onlookers be damned. I wonder who we are, who you are. Well, you're Roy and I'm Violet, you silly goose. All okay? Sure. Yeah, I, um, I tried some gardening yesterday, but I'm just totally hopeless. I just don't think I have enough, enough upper body strength. And I get really distracted by all the dog walkers. Why do I know the names of all the dogs and none of the people? You don't have to make small talk, you know. However you'd like it. There's just something different. The lighting? You can tell me. I see it. Break now. So we're going off the clock before the shower then. What happened? Oh, I'm, I'm just in trouble. Please tell me. To be hearing something real, it's what I want. The appointment, the evaluation. The disability benefits claim will be rejected because my therapist won't sign off on the paperwork. She does, she just, she doesn't get it. More. She doesn't know that this job, using my notes, lets me control my day. And it's not easy and it's never been easy alone. I understand. You couldn't. How many years have we been like this? Too many. Do you know me? My job? No, it's not to be brought up unless the topic is presented by the client. I'm a clinician, let's just leave it at that. Yeah. But you seem so well adjusted. If you wanna have something signed, I will refer you to someone. Why would you do that for me? I want you to be able to stay in business. But enough about that. Grab the bells and stare into the camera. Oh, where's the other guy? Hi, I'm Joe. I'm here to finish painting your living room. What happened to the guy? You mean Joseph? Don't tell me. The business folded. No insurance. I'll never get my money back. And now you're here to kill me. I thought you knew. Joseph got married last week. He's on his honeymoon. Oh, yeah, right. He might have told me. I'm his sister, Joe. I'm just here to finish what he started. Take down the masking tape, touch up the trim, move your furniture back into place. He sent a girl to do a man's job? Nope, we're partners, actually. Matronian Company, my three brothers, my sister, and me. That's also the flyer I got my hair cut since. Hmm, looks better short. I suppose you want to bring your stuff in? We got a smart ass on our doorstep. Do you want me to call Joseph on his honeymoon? No. Uh, uh, settle down, Antoinette. This is it. So where'd he go? Joseph, him, and Lena went to Disney World. What grown-ups go to Disney World for a honeymoon? Antoinette, my smart little girl. You know, you can always just wait for him. 
He'll be back in three weeks. Three weeks of going on the flume with Mickey Mouse? After Disney, they're going on a Caribbean cruise. On my dime. Miss Wilson, you want me to leave? No. I mean, if you're in a hurry, you can always just get another painter. I'm just doing my brother a favor. Oh, yeah, right. One painter's the same as the next. Isn't that right, Antoinette? I'll just call down to the hardware store and say, send me somebody with a pulse to get this work done. Your brother does a good job. He's the best. So what were you, maid of honor? No, that was my older sister, Josephine. I'm the baby. Don't kid yourself. Huh? You're 35 if you're a day. I'm 25. You should stay out of the sun. I paint houses. You want a sandwich? Look, this is going to take me a half an hour tops. Then I'm out of your house and you can go on with your life. I make an egg salad that'll make you cry. No, thanks. You're lost. I put celery salt in it. Just a hint. Whole wheat bread? Yeah, of course. It's just I haven't eaten since. Hang on. Who needs to go potty? I have to take her outside for a sec. I'll be right back. Be careful. There are some very valuable things in here. Don't worry, I won't touch the creepy dolls. Whew, that was close. Everything okay? She'll be fine. She loves to play out in the garden. Antoinette, don't eat those flowers. So tell me, are you insured? Are those the same paint cans? Are the colors gonna match? From Scampi for the wall? Yeah. And iceberg for the trim? Yeah, go at it. So How what's those... Joe's? A nickname? Short for Joanne. All five of us are named after our father, Joe, in some way. That's weird. Joseph Jr., Joe, Joey, Josephine, and me, Joanne. But my girlfriend likes Joe. Girlfriend? What kind of girlfriend? Nicole, she's great. Antoinette, spit it out! Spit it out! Miss Wilson, you all right? Little monster, she got into my roses again. Miss Wilson, are those plastic? Yep, never needs watering. You almost done? Get in there. This girl, what's her family like? Where are they from, farm folk? Nicole, she's a nurse from Providence. You didn't even say hello to Antoinette when you came in. Well, you never actually introduced us. You wanna go get her? I'll say hi. Don't call her Tony. My stupid neighbors called her Tony. Her name is Antoinette. Tony isn't a dignified name. Look at this face. This is a dignified face. Is my baby dignified? Antoinette must have been a real special dog, Miss Wilson. Stop calling me Mrs. Wilson. Call me Pearl. You want another sandwich? Uh, another? What happened to the first? Miss Wil Pearl, where's Mr. Wilson? Do you have kids? He died in 05. We never had children. We had dogs. What about other family? Oh, my Albert was an only child. I have a brother. Oh, where's he? He lives in Dubai. You got anyone who looks in on you? Not so much anymore. Budget cuts, I guess. Your brother used to bring me fraps, but me and Antoinette get along fine. Okay, listen, well, I'm almost done with this. Then Nicole will be here to pick me up. Maybe she could come in for a little visit. I'm not receiving guests today. I'm here. You work for me. Fair enough. She can come in if you want. One more step here and then I'll be done. Just gotta peel this masking tape off. Ah, oh, this bird's my favorite. <laughs> Look at that. No marks on the ceiling, crisp line between shrimp scampi and iceberg. Nice, huh? Looks real good. I like the sound of that tape coming off. Hey, you wanna pull the next piece? What? Here? Yeah. That's it. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. 
Satisfying, isn't it? Yeah, real satisfying. Can I do another one? Sure. Nice job, girl. I'll have to hire you as my assistant now. Very funny. The lines are so clean, so clear. Oh, that must be Nicole. Uh, can I let her in? Yeah. Does she like sandwiches? Does she like egg salad? It's her favorite. Hey, sweetheart. Uh, don't let the dog out. Will you look at that? And now to the performers, masks off. So you can see that we've all been together this afternoon. We've been able to see one another and to work together. For some of us, it's been the first time we've been able to share another's actor space since all of this began. It's a little bit of getting back to normal, getting back to theater. So we'd like to thank our performers, our wonderful director, Daniel Lee White, our technical director, Tim Killalay, and here we all are, and <laughs> the Lincoln School, the Fringe Festival, and of course, the Blue Cow Group for putting this all together. Thank you for watching this afternoon. Stay safe, get vaccinated, and take care of each other because we are all that we have. Thanks for watching. Good night.